Hey, you there. Thank you for watching, and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today, I have a 3v3 ladder matcher on the most amazing Naroxus map generator. Let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players, starting with Team 1 in the north, also known as Blue Team, ending with Team 2 in the southwest, also known as Red Team. Starting off with Team 1's easternmost player in Stitch Blue, it is Salem Moon going first line as a UEF. He is a 13.45 rated. To his west in Royal Blue, it is Kempkis 500 going first line as another UEF here for Team 1. He is an 18.50 rated. And last but not least there for Team 1 in the south, it is Alexander Berlin going first line as a Seraphim in Amethyst Purple. He is a 14.45 rated. So for Team 1's side of the map, they have two UEF and one Seraphim, which means they don't have access to Cybern or Aeon technology. Starting up for Team 2's westernmost player in Ruby Red, it is It's Not Me going first line as a Seraphim. He is a 14.72 rated in the rearguard air slot here for Team 2 in Chevy Crimson. It is Salty Pepper. Very interesting image there. Going first land, second air. He is a 15.51 rated, the highest ranked player on Team 2. And last but not least here for Team 2 in Orange, the color orange. It is Loki going first land as a UEF. He is a 14.85 rated. So for Team 2 side of the map, they have one UEF and two Seraphim, which means for the entirety of this game, there are no Cybern players and there are no Aeon players. So apologies to those loyal of the Princess and apologies to those spiky space socialists. You are not represented in this game, but hopefully you will enjoy it nonetheless. And for six players on the map, let's take a look at their amount of reclaim to scoop up. They have 16, almost 17,000 reclaim, which means it's just shy of 3,000 mass per player. That is a ton of mass to scoop up here for both of these teams. And it is everywhere i think the highest number i see is a 433 in the south yeah it's i mean there's not really a high you know 750 a thousand concentration of mass it's very spread out so our players are going to just spread across this uh area of whatever planet this is called and we'll be able to of course scoop up all that mass into their coffers and for mass mex is located on the mass a map for Team 1 side of the map, they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Trimex positions here, as well as a 5-star mech over here in the south, which will be most likely claimed by Alexander Berlin. Uh, that On the east side, that would be by Loki. And realistically, after that, there's a couple of one-offs, you know, one on each of the plateaus in the corners. That's really about it. Just a couple of mechs all just kind of scattered around the map. So our player is going to be highly focused on grabbing not only the mass in reclaim, but the mass in mechs that they can. If I were to guess, these two are going to go to Alexander. The This one in the middle is going to go to Salem Moon. Maybe he looks like he will get this one. And uh, he might even get this corner one as well. But it does look like there's a transport going for something over there. And their rearguard air slot's not really going to get a whole lot unless uh, players on his team do either graciously give some over or he just gets out there before uh, transports do. But unfortunately here for camps, he does not grab this one. He's going to Alexander Berlin. But I said he Mexis can be transferred over, so that's not a huge issue. But I feel like at least the rearguard air slot players should at least get one of those groups of mixes at a minimum. And with that out of the way, it looks like all the players on Team 2 have left their main bases going for either frontline positions or mixes or both. And on Team 1's side of the map, it looks like all of the comms on Team 1, except for, no, all of them, have left their main bases, either going again for mixes or going for frontline positions or a little bit of both, that being the case of Sailor Moon. And I'm going to speed up the game just a tiny bit. This is a... Uh, a little bit over an hour ladder match. And with 3v3 at this side of a map, it kind of takes a little bit to get going. We did see an encounter between It's Not Me and a couple of these Selens outbound from Alexander Berlin, but that's about it. Alexander does land some engineers on the southwestern corner mixes. He's going to try to grab those as soon as he can. That one, quote-unquote, belongs to Team 2. We'll see how long it stays there for Alexander, but we'll just have to see transport does get dropped off by Team 2's orange color, orange boy of Loki. 
and that engineer does uh, immediately get reclaimed by his opponent. So no uh, capturing slash uh, reclaiming for that engineer. And in the middle of the map, very devoid of units, at least from this northeastern section, it looks like both of the players of Sailor Moon and Salty Pepper kind of just hanging out a little bit. Looks like there is some movement for these civilian structures that have already been actually scooped up by Sailor Moon. And the calm of It's Not Moon really moving westward to be able to take out this group of mexes and the T1 land facility. The bomber will be able to handle most of this. And Counter Bomber also out from Alexander trying to harass those engineers. For the rigor Desktop player of Salty Pepper, which, again, can you have Salty Pepper? And if so, isn't this that salt and pepper? Question. Uh, that... Uh, might need to be answered or might not, depending on your uh, fascination with condiments or uh, I don't know if there's another name for salt and pepper in terms of food additives. I think there probably is. Seasoning? Seasonings. Seasonings, that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, I do hear a calm just blasting away. It is, it's not me going after that land facility. He's going to sit there and just throw his plasma at that place. T1 radar system will go down. Two of those units outbound from Alexander Berlin in the middle. And not a lot of uh, action going on the eastern side as there is on the western side here. Just, again, a lot of harassment mostly here between these two players, mainly from Alexander against It's Not Me. And in the east, it looks like there looks like it's going to be a similar engagement that uh, Team 2's It's Not Me is doing against Alexander Berlin, outbound from Loki in the east with some of these T1 strikers. There are a couple of units diverted northward, but there is a PD which will instantly vaporize them. So not really good idea that those units are going there. But he doesn't know they're there. So that's not going to feel good. Those units have been denied. T1 PD has also been built here. So Sailor not Sailor Moon, excuse me. That is Camps has secured his position as well as Sailor Moon. Transport outbound from Loki. Going to drop off some engineers for this upper plateau. Going to go after the... Oh, actually, no. Going to actually drop off down here. There is no land facility. Nope. Going to drop anyways. Looks like it's trying to just avoid all of these interceptors that are nearby. Transport does drop one engineer. I think I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so I don't miss anything in the middle, but I probably will speed it back up. The transport, as I look away, does get shot down. The engineer does make it onto the upper plateau, and we'll probably just hang out for the time being. Team 2, not really expanding as much as... Uh, you know, they really want to, but they have, at least in the West, pushed back Alexander Berlin in most locations, except for this tiny annoyance area here by Alexander Berlin. He's behind enemy lines. Nice little Team 1 land facility, just spamming out units as much as it can. Transport laden with some Zooey outbound from It's Me, getting a nice engagement on these interceptors that were kind of sitting there taking a nap. Distance built outbound from It's Not Me, and this is a facility on the main landmass for Alexander Berlin. Oh, interceptor nearby. Is it going to drop those Zooey or is it not? Are there any other interceptors nearby? No, they're not. How far are those Zooey going to make it? They're going to drop right here. All of them make landfall. There are some tanks nearby, so those will be killed off very, very quickly. But it's still annoying and will distract Team 1 at least for a little bit. Still not a lot of action happening in the middle of the map here in the east. Team 1's blue comms, that being Camp and Sailor Moon, have secured that position. And, uh, of course, just kind of sitting there waiting for Team 2 to attack. Unfortunately here for Team 1, doesn't look like there's going to be any landfall missions for the time being. That being due to the AA and the interceptors nearby. The T3 air is definitely going to be on the mines here for both of these players trying to drop units on top of their opponents with a lot more ease. At least T2 transports at the minimum. The UEF commanders, of course, get T3 continentals. But uh, most factions don't have access to those. It's just the UEF. And speaking of T3 air, it is online for Salty Pepper. That is a very quick T3 air before 10 minutes. Team 1 only at T2. This is huge for Team 2. If he goes for the bomber first, he's going to do a considerable amount of damage to Team 1. He could not necessarily deny the T3 upgrade, but could take out the T2 p very easily. Could really do damage to essentially anyone else on the map. And will he go for the bomber? He's going to go for engineers right now. Going to build that T3 P gen. But again, once that's built, we'll have to check back and see if he does go for that bomber. It's really, it's not super rare we see bomber first. But due to the fact that Team 1 doesn't have T3 air, if Salty Pepper knows this, 
which he doesn't have any idea about it. He's, he's going to get a little bit of vision from his teammate. He, m uh, if I Obviously, we have all the vision. He should go for Bomber, in my opinion. We'll see if he does. Well, we'll just have to check back to see what's going on with that. A couple of units outbound here from Alexander Berlin to try to secure this position once again. It's Not Me has retreated and has allowed Alexander Berlin to take hold of this position once again. And again, Team 2 playing relatively defensive, at least on their front line. You know, going for the tech transport laden with an engineer on board. No uh, T3P gen as of yet. It's almost going to be constructed. And these two comms for Team 1, again, just hanging out, building some PD, getting some D TMDs online, upgrading these mixes. Again, they're establishing a nice forward position. Love to see that. There's no real advantage to just hold out in this position. It's very isolated, especially the one back here, for at least comms at a minimum. Because the only way out of there would be this you know, walkway or transporting over, which could be dangerous if the other team has air. This is definitely the best position to hold because it does allow for multiple vectors of escape. And, of course, if there's a transport out from a different direction. Looks like we might see the first calm on calm action between It's Not Me and Alexander Berlin. Alexander has T2 and Gun. It's Not Me has nothing, so advantage does go to Team 1's commander. Sailor Moon has T2. Camps has nothing. And these two commanders for Team 2 have nothing and nothing. So Team 1's the only one that have y calm upgrades. And does the bomber start? No, it is an ASF. Still building ASFs. I do not see a bomber, at least as of right now. Not going to get a spy plane. He will probably notice T3 air has been constructed. It's definitely a missed opportunity, but of course he didn't know that unless he had some of those scouts over top. It looks like he's going to build more and more pigeons and expand that air grid out very, very quickly. So that will be a little bit of advantage for Team 2, but the advantage will again slip away as time goes on. In terms of like the degree of advantage, you know, they have a huge advantage having T3 and them not having T3. Then they get T3, but you have two air facilities. They have one. That's not really that much of an advantage. It is, but it really isn't. Unless it's like, you know, 20 air facilities versus 10. I mean, you can really produce ASF very, very quickly out of 10, for, or out of 20 versus 10. T2 land, of course, making its main debut on the f central stage here for both teams. We see, of course, uh, two of the three players on two of, sorry, one of the two players on Team 1 going to land has T2 online. And a huge line of units outbound on this western edge here for It's Not Me to deal with. Some of them do get behind that commander. Commander is on its way to intercept, at least deal with the backline units. And there are some issues online here for It's Not Me. So unfortunately, they're not going to get super deep, but they will take out three mixes, which is better than nothing. And another attack outbound from Alexander Berlin. Attack on multiple fronts. Some units do get past on this eastern side. And on this main side, a lot of units do break through. There are a couple of PD online. A lot of them with a decent amount of wall sections, too. And so this will force, of course, most units to go around. But there are, of course, some Zui nearby. And those T1 artillery. So they will be able to attack at range against those PD. They were T2 PD. Not so much. But they are T one but we do see the bomber outbound here from team two salty pepper i don't think he wants it to be spotted by anybody but it has been spotted i don't know if they've uh, made any comments they have not and there is a spy plane they will get a radar signature on board that bomber bomber going to drop over here and it's going to get a nice little aoe explosion take out most of the hit points on board those facilities one more pass will kill off all of those facilities and there is a transport laden with some zooey on board does drop does get shot out of the sky immediately, but just barely too late with the units are dropping. We'll take out a T2 mobile flak cannon, but the PD nearby will deal with that. Bomber over top. Circle back around. Looks like it's going after a mex. Team 2, of course, has the air advantage. They are not pressing it because Team 1 now has T3 ASFs online. And as I said, kind of a missed opportunity, but you just got to have the vision or the, the intel to know, and he just didn't. All four of those facilities are done and dusted. Team 1 air being produced to go for those bombers. But, uh, again, the land facilities have been done and dusted. There are some engineers remaining. At least, yeah, there's one engineer at least. So it's not hugely out of the realm to be able to produce more land facilities. A bomber over top going after another Team 1 mechs. will kill that one off. Tried to get the comm in that explosion, but the comm moved out of the way. ASMs will intercept that bomber immediately. Bomber will get a nice pass, but it will die. 
to those ASFs, unfortunately, and land on team one side of the map. Definitely unfortunate, but what can you do? And not go for it. That's what he could have done, but, you know, again, hindsight and whatnot. I think I'm going to speed it back up just a little bit. Mainly just a little bit of skirmishing going down over here. But Team 2's... Actually, I will slow back in. Loki in the east has been able to drop at least a couple of Riptides up here. Going after those T2 mexes. Team 1 PD trying to be scrambled immediately. And it looks like the units are given target priorities to the mexes. So those will not be killed off. Janus over top will bake them in holy napalm. And rip apart the hit points on board those Riptides. And the Team 1 PD will be able to do the rest of the damage. So a little bit of a nice uh, engagement here from Team 2's Loki, but could have probably been better had he been able to deny the Team 1P that were built. But, of course, there is the Janus, so it's kind of, do they go after the Mexes? Do they go after, you know, the PD? It's you know, kind of hard to make that decision, especially what's going to be the best decision in the moment sometimes. Sometimes it's the best, sometimes it's not. Just kind of look at the dice and that sort of thing. Nice frontline facility coming online here for Alexander Berlin. Mobile T2 missile launchers in range of PD. Definitely not where your uh, Team 2 is. It's not me should put those. And he's now just to set one tiny little Ilshi to run around the map. Looks like there are going to be engineers rebuilding these facilities here shortly. There's only one of them, so it's going to take a while. Kind of surprised that no more, no more engineers being built out of that air facility, but probably focused on other endeavors. Looks like he's going for transport. Bring another group of uh, these Zui online. And the Ilshi, of course, still going after those Team 1 mechs. He's trying to snip away at Team 1's eco. And what is going on with these wall sections? Loki just probably just went brrrr. And then that's, that's the wall section. There's still a way through. It is very annoying and whatnot. So uh, it's going to be one of those things where the pathfinding is going to be annoying. But... A couple of bombers will be able to deal with that very, very easily. So not a huge issue, but still annoying. It's Part of this game is all about being annoying. And the longer you can be annoying and the more places you can be annoying, the percentage chance you're going to win does go up. But especially if you're know, annoying over here, annoying over here, annoying over here, just all around, kind of forcing your opponent to constantly go back and forth, back and forth to deal with issues left and right. It's not me dealing with those rest of the forces outbound from Alexander Berlin. Very, very nicely here. Has forced them mo most of them back and now has veterancy. So a little bit more hit points and a little bit more regen per second. Always a nice thing to have. T2, sorry, T3 coming on the way here for Salty Pepper in this position here in the east. Though he's going for it, teching up very, very quickly. Don't know what he's going to go for there, but he's going to build something there. Team 1, you have T3 land yet? Yes, you do. Outbound from Sailor Moon. Team 2 has T2 and T3 air. So a second player on Team 2 has gone for air. Very, very interesting. Will give them a lot of utility in the air, considering that uh, the ASFs do kind of reside with Team 1. But if Team 2 is able to output more than Team 1, then uh, we'll definitely uh, break the tie. Not break the tie, but lend their favor but of course focusing on air means you don't focus on land which means team one will have that advantage at least on this eastern side against loki but currently team one isn't really assaulting that uh, front line and the calm of camp has returned or is returning to his main base so he doesn't get sniped by either gunships or bombers and again alexander berlin still holding the line just kind of hanging out ripping up some hit points by those engineers and himself and at this point i'm going to again speed it back up Ladder matches, especially with uh, less players or players, like maps like this with less players in them, it does take a little bit for the game to get going. There are pockets of a lot of inaction, but not a lot of inaction, a lot of action. And it's just kind of one of those things where, I mean, maybe even I'll go to two. A lot of uh, just moving engineers around in the east. You know, there are defenses online for both sides of these players, and so they're kind of just hanging out. Ecoing up. Speaking of eco, Team 1 slightly ahead in the game at 500, Team 2 at 460. So they are starting to out eco Team 2 just ever so slightly. Missile launcher is now out of range of the PD. Don't know why. Maybe uh, it's not me who's focusing on something else and move them closer by accident. He's building a nice group of Ilshis over here to the e over here in this middle position. So he'll be definitely suited up. But Team 1 does have a. Uh, uh, it does have T3 and Sailor Moon, not outbound from Alexander Berlin. The upgrade for T3 has been started for It's Not Me. 
And T3 land also has been started here for Loki. So Team 2 is still focusing on land, but they're slightly behind in that game. And Team 1's air grid, a couple of facilities online. Same thing here with Team 2's air grid. Same amount of facilities, plus, of course, the additional one outbound from Loki. So five versus four in that regard. Missile launcher still trying to press the issue. Cannot crack the shields. Go into range of those PD and get wiped out. Ilshi's able to respond very, very quickly, but there is a escorting Ishi, Ilshi outbound here for Alexander Berlin. And the Zuri are not going to get into Team 2's as mechs. As this facility did, did get popped back online. So Team 2 will have to divert at least something over to do with that. Ilshi running away, running around, being bombarded as we speak by an attacking Sinve. So it uh, won't get a lot of use out of it, unfortunately, because it will be shot from above. Looks like there is a nice little Ilshi leading some more Zui here. But there are some T2PD in this base. Upgrading to T3 mechs is very far forward. Has he upgraded his mechs in his main base? No, he still has a couple T3, or sorry, T2s. He could upgrade a T3 and all these over here. Definitely a heavy investment to go frontline T3, but I think he's thinking because he's right here, might as well just upgrade those. But, I mean, you usually upgrade back to front is the most protected, the best return on investment to the least protected, least return on investment. And not really a whole lot. Missile outbound, or is that artillery? That is a missile going after low case mexes in the east. The team one Sailor Moon getting a lot of value. Actually, no, I think that's, where's that come? It's over here. Coming outbound from a camp, actually. So he's getting a lot of value out of that missile launcher. Again, denying team two's eco ever so slightly. Team 1, again, scaling their eco divide here. It's 700 versus 640, so it's at 60 mass more than Team 2. And another missile outbound here from Team 1. This time it's outbound. Actually, where's that team? I need to put that mod back on. That shows me the, the icons for the defenses and the missile launchers. It, I did see it. I'm not crazy. I did see a missile launch. At least that's what I thought was a missile. Anyway, air fight in the west. Looks like it's happening between Team 2 and Team 1's air forces. Both of those air forces outbound from Loki and Salty Pepper. The forces from Salty Pepper go after the gunships. They're able to shoot them down. All of the Team 1 AA have been destroyed. And it looks like Team 1 will get out better due to that uh, focus on the gunships. Team 1 has air control for the time being at 24 minutes. And with that, let's take a look at the game overall. Team 1 have all three players left. Team 2 also has all three players left. Team 2 sitting at 720 mass income. Team 1 at 760. So that that divide has shortened, actually shortened considerably. Probably it was a power generated issue. So about 20, 25 mass income more for Team 1. Of course, it constantly fluctuates. Team 1 have definitely more map control. I'd say at least 60% at a minimum. And Team 2, of course, have 40, being the, of course, 100 minus 60. But let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win this game just based on these stats. It's a little bit harder to tell when ladder matches, but I'd love to hear your comments and respond to them. Thank you so very much for watching. And, of course, if you haven't done so already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all uh, support you give to the channel, whether it's watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, whatever it may be. I really do appreciate it. And realize that the missile launcher is on board the Commander. Not an actual missile launcher. So Alexander Berlin benefits from killing off all of the mexes that he will uh, shoot down or actually kill off. He's sitting at 3,600 mass killed with six kills. And I think that's mostly mexes. Three of them, four of them have been killed off. Team B has been built to defend those positions again. But uh, is that Team D going to be able to shoot down that missile? Yes, just barely. Oof, that was... Very close for that TMD's life, but it is still alive. And a huge swarm of T1, T1 and T2 units, mostly T2, outbound from Alexander Berlin on this lower you know, section of the map. We see It's Not Me going to move in and intercept. He has gun and nano on board that commander. And again, Alexander Berlin has gun, T2, and missile. He does not have access to nano. Lots of Yenzine in the mix, the T2 hover as well as, of course, a decent amount of Ilshis and a ton of AA flag. He did not skip uh, anti-air day. Definitely a good engagement here for him as well. We'll deny a couple of you know spam gunships or bombers outbound from Team 2. 
Lots of Ilshis online, though, for It's Not Me. I could see another attack outbound from Alexander Berlin had he kept some of his units in his main, his main fire base, but unfortunately, that is not to be the case. TMD is not built here in the east. It was about to be built. Going to go after that uh, T2PD, and that uh, TMD will be possibly continued, possibly maybe. Fatty is 10%, says Salty. Team 1 Sailor Moon is producing a fatty in the middle of the map that's going to wreak havoc on Team 2's wall sections as well as a bunch of those Percy's that are sitting guarding that approach. And again, the downside with defending, or at least being very on the defensive, is that especially if Team 1 or the other team has more map control, it means they have more mexes, which means, or generally, which means they can outproduce you, you know, incredibly fast, especially if you're not causing havoc in any of the back lines or the sides with harassment from tactical missile launchers, gunships, bombers, whatever the case may be. But playing defensive does have its disadvantages. Advantages is, is you're not spending mass to throw at your opponent if you're not going to capture the land, so you can funnel it to other pursuits. We might see an early artillery or game ender here from one of these players on Team 2. And speaking not necessarily like game enders, Nuke online and half-loaded for Team 2's air player of Salty Pepper. And that is going to be very, very big here for them. Team 1, have they noticed it? Yes, they have. So fully aware of the nuclear threat that Team 2 holds. Does Team 1 have anything that could counter that? They have an SMD online over here. That is not loaded. SMD half loaded, more than half loaded here for Sailor Moon. SMD back here also has been built. And SMD back here is being heavily assisted by camp. So two of those SMD heavily assisted by both of the blue players on Team 1 with obviously some assistance in the west. So that nuke, even if it loads, will more than likely not be able to land. There's, there is some assistance outbound, but not as much, which means it will load slower, which means that SMDs for Team 1 will load before the launch, or at least before the landing at a minimum, if not the launch, which I'm assuming it will be the launch. And the only viable place that Team 2's nuke could land is actually against Alexander Berlin. He doesn't have any SMD coverage. So that would be definitely a nice little weight off of It's Not Me's shoulders. But he does have a chicken online. And it looks like Team 1's Alexander knows about it. So he's going to just say, nope, I'm gone. Not going to deal with that today. See you, bye. And he's uh, launching some artillery shells against this position. Will hold for the time being against the one artillery piece. So not really a huge threat there. Omni in the middle of the map. Love to see that. Gets huge amounts of a vision here for Team 1. Especially in the Omni department. That's how much they can always see. And then obviously they can see the rest of the map. At least in terms of radar signatures that do not have stealth. Or stealth auras or whatever the case may be. I know the Cybrans, which are not in the game have deceivers that can essentially emit a, uh, a stealth field generator, essentially. The firebase is done and dusted here for Alexander Berlin. Will he make it out of dodge? He's being body blocked by a ton of his units, so not really uh, doing well there. 30 minutes also on the clock. ASFs from Team 2 coming in to shadow this chicken. Team 1, do you have any response to that? I don't think so. No gunships. Coming online here for Team 1. And not a lot of Team 1 bombers either. So Team 2's chicken does come into range of Alexander's comm. Will it get the kill? Ooh, down to 2,200 hit points left. Oh, and there he goes. He's not going to get out of range. And there go all of those other units as well. Team 2 scores the first kill at almost 30 minutes on the dot. So Team 1 almost made it before 30 minutes. Or made it to 30 minutes without a calm dying. But everything does get shifted over to, I would assume, yep, camp. So camp's now control the entire western side of the map. Going to get a nice amount of eco to his coffers. He'll be able to spam up more ASF. But chicken on the front line, definitely something that Team two, or team 1 obviously has to deal with. Fat Boy is coming online, but it's taking its sweet time to do so. It's only in the yellow, and it's not even, oh, well, it's, now it's almost, uh, it is a little bit half over completion. That chicken is just going to, go for it, which why not at this point? Team 2 could go after the air fight. Let's see, how many ASFs does Camp have? He has 84 plus... No, those are interceptors, so only 84. 
Team 2 Salty Pepper has 84. So essentially a tie in the air game. And I don't think I see any... Well, Loki, how many do you have? You have 33. So no, Team 2 has the advantage if they're gifted over in this fight, which I don't think they will. What I love from... It's not me as he sent his main chicken, his main chicken, his main unit being the chicken, forward further into Team 1's base and then sent his rest of his supporting units, which there's not really a lot of units to deal with on Team 1's side of the map anyways, to this other position down south and kill off Your five T2 launch. Mexes. Nuke will launch from Team 2's air player of Salty Pepper and is going after this position. The SMD... Oh, it's going to be close. I clicked on the wrong version, didn't I? Uh, oh, it's going to be close, but I think that SMD will not shoot down that nuke. The chicken does receive a lot of damage to the fact the units get behind him. ASF fight, not really great for Team 2, but the ASFs from Team 2 is other air player of Loki come in and not really fully engage. They're kind of sitting on the edges of the fight. Team 2's air will beat this. ASFs do engage and definitely will win that fight for Team 2. So Team 2 will have at least air control at a minimum, if not air dominance, and a bunch of T2 Stinger gunships just kind of singing air, sitting here, hanging out. And that will be a victory here for Team 2. That chicken is still alive. Two-star veterancy. And those Ilshis now pushing on this western side. Huge, huge benefit here for Team 2. Taking out essentially an entire place eco. But unfortunately, Team 1 has also built the chicken. And that chicken will beat Team 2's chicken. Even though it has two-star veterancy, it just lost too many hit points. But we'll do a decent amount of damage to it. With the uh, If the chicken can get pretty close to these mexes, the Iron Storm will kill off at least this T2 mix, if not, maybe it could reach to that T3, but I don't think it will. And those issues, of course, are moving on that western side. Stinger gunships inbound to assist, but again, they're not really going to go anywhere, unfortunately. Ion Storm, will it kill off Team 1's chicken? Oh, just a thousand hit points remaining. If the chicken, if the Ilshis divert, they might kill off the chicken, which they have diverted. Will they kill off the chicken here from Team 1? No, it gets a rank in veterancy, very crucially, and that chicken will survive. Uh, it's got to hurt, but uh, it does not matter. The chicken is done and dusted, severely wounded, will not be used on the front line for a while. And Team 2 did take out a lot of Team 1's eco, dropping them below 1,000 income, which means Team 2 is in the lead at 1,200 mass income versus Team 1's 930, roughly. And the ASFs are still alive, at least to most degree. There are some T3 AA being built. And there's a nice little shield preset running around. Don't really see those, at least on the front line every day. And a Rambo preset, so I think the Rambo and the shield are going to be best buds. But the Othams will be killed off. New coming online here for Team 1, the Stone Angel outbound from Sailor Moon. Team 2, do you have SMD coverage? Yes, it is loaded. And no. Very crucially, Loki does not have SMD coverage. Do they know about the nuke? No, they do not, and that nuke might launch and land on Loki's base, and that's not going to feel good. It is not going to feel good. A couple of Ilshis still staying, hanging out there for It's Not Me. Attack from Team 2's Air Force, at least in the form of some gunships, finally eradicating Team 1's presence in the southern edge of the map. We won't have to worry about for that for a time being. Strat Bomber running around here for uh, Sailor Moon. And that will instantly get shot down. Looks like it was going after the second chicken outbound from Salty Pepper. And very interestingly, I think it's not me as built. No, I mean, he is building them. Surprised he's not going for more air grid or more mass fabs or whatever. But he was just producing chickens. So interesting play from the rear guard airsoft player producing the experimentals on the front lines, which also it's not me is producing a uh, habitat. So the air player is doing the ground player's job and sorry, the land player's job. And the land player's job is not necessarily doing the air player's job, which goes for artillery, goes for nukes, whatever. But it's essentially is doing that. So they've kind of switched roles for the time being. It's Not Me has more mass income than Salty Pepper, which means that uh, artillery will finish more than likely sooner had Salty Pepper been the one building it. But with that chicken online in the middle of the map, Team 2 has secured this approach for the time being. Fat Boy was produced and uh, as finished for Team 1. And that nuke is about loaded. My prediction is it's going to go for the main base of Loki. It could go for the secondary base, but 
if Team 1 obviously notices there's no SMD here, that might be the target, which would be the better bet. They pretty much know there's no SMD. So, again, like I said, the better target to go after you. You would kill off most likely a comm, and you'd kill an entire base worth of eco, so definitely worth it here for Team 1 to go after. Second chicken has been built here by Team 1, so the one that was severely wounded and the one that's uh, now freshly minted off the front lines. Looks like the chicken here from Salty Pepper does join the one from It's Not Me. So It's Not Me was also producing a chicken. Don't know where he was producing it, but he was. Looks like he's also going to go for T2 uh, transports. Gunship sitting down in the corner here for Salty Pepper. But Gunship's in the east building up here for Loki. Done a decent amount of broadswords being shielded by Team 2's air forces. Gunship's being used against Camp's position over here. So he's going to lose a couple of uh, engineers and couple of mechs here. At least he's already lost two of them. And artillery still raining down around there. Team 1's air does not want to engage. Don't blame them because they do not have the numbers. They're just waiting for an opening. But I love this T2 gunships outbound from Salt and Pep Salty Pepper. So I was going to say Salt and Pepper. And T3 gunships outbound from Loki. So heavy gunships here for Team 2. They're able to, of course, raid everything that Team 1 owns. Not a lot of AA coverage here. And those gunships going to move in and go after the SAM facilities. For Team 1, looks like. And if they group up with the gunships from Team 2, going to do a decent amount of damage. But it does look like Salt and Pepper will retreat. Salty Pepper, excuse me, will retreat. And looks like they're beginning to, to deal with all of that AA. To be fair, in Spanish, the Y in between Salt and Pepper would be translated as E. So it would be... I forget what it is in, in Spanish. I forget what salt and pepper are in Spanish, but it'd be essentially salt and pepper for his red, just with the Y being in Spanish and the other words being in English. But it it's essentially, I mean, salty pepper is like saying peppery salt. How much of one is contributed to the other kind of thing? Usually that would mean there's more, s either there's some salt in the pepper, so it's salty pepper, or there'd be peppery salt, which would be more pepper Sorry, more salt than pepper. And in this scenario, I feel like it's more pepper than salt. But let me know down in the comments what you think. His, his name, for some reason, fascinates me today. And uh, it's fun to have uh, players that you know, have fun with their names. I, I know last video there was uh, Critter, who I kept calling Cricket, because I was combining the first part of his name with the last part of his name. And for those of you who have watched that video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, definitely... Uh, Def on the nose in terms of what his name means, though that's why I just referred to him as Critter instead of and Cricket apparently, but not uh, his full name. T3 artillery has been completed here for it's not me facing off against the T3 artillery outbound from Sailor Moon, and so both so both players, though the respective players in the same positions have T3 artillery. It looks like the ASFs from Loki have been destroyed. Nuke has launched. Will it go for Loki's position? No, it will not because it's actually outbound from Salty Pepper. And it's going after this position, which has Strategic an SMD, launch. and it is loaded. Was not killed off in the chicken engagement. Counter Nuke outbound from Team 1 going after this position. Ton of artillery, to be fair. So if you're going for a high just mass, you know, blow a hole in Team 2's defenses. That's a massive hole. SMD is almost loaded. Would not have loaded in time. He's also going for artillery. The Team 2 is going to have a secondary artillery piece here pretty soon. All of the wall sections get control case so those units can try to flee. And all of that artillery goes up in smoke. Kaboom. Oh, and I forgot. It was a nuke that uh, landed over here. Kaboom. Sorry. Apologies. I completely forgot about that. And how much mass did that kill off? 41,000. Definitely respectful for one nuke. Artillery now focusing on Loki's base. It's not really shielded, so looks like they might be targeting the SMD. Nope. Oh, they're making a comment that It's Not Me has an SMD. So no nukes are going to work on him for the time being. But while the artillery from Team 1 is not focusing on Team 2's artillery, Team 2's artillery is focusing on Team 1's artillery. And usually... Sometimes when that happens, it means either Team 1 is super confident in their defenses or they're focused on a more annoying threat, which would be... or a different threat being that over here. The Fat Boy will push forward, kill off the rest of those units here for Loki. And 
He doesn't really have a whole lot. ASFs move in, try to clear up anything they can. We'll be shot down by the ASFs from Salty Pepper. There are some gunships online here for Loki, but there is a decent amount of flak and a decent amount of T3 air as well. So I don't know if it'll crack the AA defenses on board that land army, but it can try. It looks like the gunships will move in. They need to attack the AA first, then go after everything else. The strap bombers over the top kill off the fat boy, which was the main threat. And the gunships do focus the AA team to providing a nice clearing for those uh, gunships to work. Strap bombers go after. It looks like they were going after the scatter shield. Could have gone after the SMD. Maybe that was the actual target, but at least the shield is down. And now it looks like all of the AA has been killed off. Targeting the Percy's next. No engineers are building defenses. This, this is going to be a walk into Team 2's Loki's base. Percy's trying to be built off that front line. Artillery just constructed here for Team 2's Loki. So two artillery pieces online here for them. And I'll go back to the land. Actually, no, I'll just stay on the land fight. Bombers over top going after... Gunship? Not gunships, sorry. The artillery, possibly? One bomb does release from its shoot, but uh, does not amount to anything. Loki, no gun upgrade. Just has T3, so a decent amount of hit points. There's a lot of T1 in this mix, as well as some T2 triads that are being spanned up as quickly as they can be. There is a Titan in the mist, which Titan's not going to do a whole lot. But the air grid for Team 2's Salty Pepper has been for lack of a better word, eviscerated. He's building a T3 air facility to try to compensate. So this is all the air that he has, which is none, because Team 1 just gained air dominance, so this is huge. Not only did Team 2 have it, but they killed off the ASF that Team 2 had, and they gained air dominance and killed off the air grid. Huge, huge move here from Team 1. We'll bring them back into this. Not bring them back, but definitely will give them a decent advantage. And it looks like the... Uh, Duke for Team 2's Loki will be fine. All those PE that were built definitely helped, especially with building dual lines of them. And those Percy's moving into range. Uh, not going to do well. Get some veterans on board Loki to survive a little bit more shots. Team 1's air grid is decently huge. When I say decent, I mean he's he has 16, including the T3 air facility. Team 1 over here to the east has three more including the T3 air facility. Nuke is loaded, it looks like. Nope, almost loaded. And artillery did take a shot, but is still fine. And again, a unit at 1 HP can do 100% of the damage, so you got to make sure you kill it off. There's no, like, malfunctions if you lose a certain amount of HP or whatever, which would be an interesting function if, you know, let's say a structure has, like, 25% of its hit points and it loses, you know, I don't know, max health or you know, it loses the ability to fire as quickly or can produce as quickly because, let's say, the engineering arms are kind of destroyed, you know, kind of damaged or produces units slower. That'd be definitely an interesting feature. I don't know if they'd ever implement it into FAF, but it would be an interesting kind of, like, survival mechanic where as your structures get damaged, they produce... You either produce less, fire less, or reload fat, uh, slower, whatever the attribute you want to give to kind of make the game a little bit harder. But transport with some bros on board. Those drop looks like one of them. Are they all Rambos? Looks like they're all Rambos. Gonna get a nice shot of the, the lads. Oh. We get a shot of the lads. Where are they going? Lads are going somewhere. Where are you going, sirs? They're going somewhere. They're going to the front lines trip with me and the boys is essentially what this is. <laughs> uh, nuke will... Uh, I mean, the nuke sound has been uh, alerted, so I will uh, stop looking at some uh, SACUs transporting on a Continental. But it has been launched here from Team 1 up onto Loki secondary base, so he will lose that. Can't go after his main base, but dual fat boy on the front line as well for Team 1. That's going to hurt. And a ton of gunships going after that chicken. If you watched my video yesterday, I also mentioned, and a lot of you probably already know this, flak on board that uh, chicken is weak. It is not good. And I heard Rascom explode. Kaboom in the east. I don't know where that... Where did that Continental go? Oh, the boys didn't make it. Oh, 
That's sad. But Loki has been defeated by Sailor Moon. Looks like he tried to charge forward and go after the Fat Boys. He was denied by Percy and Fat Boy Fire. It's now a 2v2 game here. GG says Loki. Not necessarily meaning that it is GG for Team 2 and Team 1 has won, but you know, still being very considerate of saying, hey, it was a good game even though I died. And it looks like we are winning almost. Survive. Says it's not me, but a squadron of strap bombers might make the differ. Two fat boys online pushing against the Duke that was firing, but has to be realigned because when artillery, of course, is uh, gifted over to somebody else, it has to reset. And the bomber will land on top of that fat boy, killing off its shield and a decent chunk of its hit points. Chicken is moving in to intercept, and that ASF force is moving in for that bomber. The bomber will not survive. At this point, you might as well just control K near your base and uh, call it good. ASF going over T3AA, though. Definitely not the best place to go. And there goes that bomber going to land in It's Not Me's base, saying, It's not me. It's not me. It's not my bomber. Go away. Uh, his land facility gets destroyed. I think that's the land. Land facility. But his T3 land, perfectly fine. Is uh, wounded, but it's perfectly fine. Chicken able to close the gap on that fat or kill off one of them, and will close the gap on the second one and kill that one off. But four chickens pushing the front line here for Team 2 up against two chickens outbound from Team 1. 2v1, 3v1, and soon to be 4v1. That is a fight that Team 1 cannot win. Ion Storm will be activated a little bit farther out than Team 1 would have hoped. And the fat point still has not been caught up by the chicken, very surprisingly. Oh, uh, the chicken, oh, well, okay, literally as I say something, of course, usually when it happens. Chicken is now in range of the shield of the fat boy, and the fat boy will take hull damage now, and that is uh, not going to feel good. Will the chicken die to it? No, it won't. It barely survives. And those four chickens here, oh, excuse me, three chickens for team two. Going to continue to press on four, kill off the second chicken for team one. New fat boy is online, kills off that chicken, avenges his brother. And artillery now landing against Salty Pepper. Is it going after a calm assassination? No, looks like it's still going for air. Ooh. Ooh. I felt that one. Ouch. Especially when the shield was popping back online. Strap bombers over the top going after the artillery here for Team 2. Two of them have been built. Will Team 2 have enough air defenses and shields to deal with this? And a lot of them oh, do get shot down. Oh, this is going to be enough. It kills off both of the bombers. The ball the bombers. Both of the artillery for Team 2. It's not me. Has lost both of his artillery pieces. Team 1 has one artillery piece online, one nuke. Team 2 has no nuke, no artillery pieces. Not even the one in uh, Loki's old base that is now no longer Loki's because it's transferred over to Salty Pepper. But Team 2 is winning the ground game currently. Strap Bombers overhead. Not a lot of, actually not a lot, being no AA in this group. Definitely, again, need to build a mobile AA for your experimentals because this happens. Gunships and uh, Bombers overhead. The T-4 Awasa Bomber over top will AOE kill off that chicken. This chicken is severely wounded going after T-3 Mexes. This chicken does kill off the SMD over here, so... Had Team 2 had a nuke still, it would be a decent amount of uh, damage. A -A or AS ASF coming behind that bomber. Do a decent amount of damage to it. Drop it almost into the yellow. The bomber does have some AA on board. And it looks like uh, with some nearby AA will be enough. More ASF moving in, trying to kill off that bomber. All of the chickens are dead. Actually, sorry, almost all the chickens are dead, but that one's essentially dead. Well, you just need to tell that instead of losing us game, my air grid was destroyed. Why did you not tell me that? You need help in air. Looks like uh, Team 2 kind of miscommunicated that, saying, hey, I lost my air grid. And looks like the other player, it's not me, didn't know that because he didn't know that. He wasn't building a lot of AA or defenses and therefore lost his two artillery pieces. Bad boy in the east, going to be saved by some ASF counter artillery being built. Bad boy currently isn't moving, so artillery will get a nice shot on that. Chicken online here for It's Not Me. And Autumn still push in. A lot of PD to fight through. I don't know what they're going for. Team 3 Mexes would have been a nice uh, nice target. Team 2 is still out producing Team 1. Team 1 at 900 mass income. Team 2 at 1.2. Actually, it's going to be 870, but rounding up. Looks like 
Oh, 1.4, 1.2. Is that power related? Yup, that is power related. So that would explain a little bit. Artillery from Team 2 is going to be enough. Clean Camera's trying to reload and fire once more. Do they fire? No. No. And no. Well, maybe. Maybe not. That boy is saved in the east. Team 1 will secure this eastern side here for their side. Or their, well, their side being Team 1. I see you already stopping fire, uh, fighting. Says it's not me. And nope, just power stall. Yep, that uh, again. He's building a bomber. You probably should stop building the bomber and build PD. Not PD, P gens. You should probably should build PD too. But I mean, it's costing you a lot of power to build that. I do. I do understand you wanting to build that to protect the eastern side, but it's taking you forever to build it because you have no power. So kind of one of those chicken and the egg kind of things. But again, he could stop building it, build PGENs, then return to build it, and that might be enough time to still get it online. Percy's have secured the area here for Team 1's Sailor Moon in the east. This is deep in Team 2's territory. Again, the further deep they go, again, stuff like this happens. Not the fighter bombers over top. We'll kill off that fat boy here for Team 2. And at 40 minutes, 49 minutes, almost 50 minutes on the clock, how much mass? That is a lot of numbers. Almost half a million masks, 480,000 masks currently on the field, and it is everywhere, well, almost anywhere. It's not in Sailor's Moon Base, but it's everywhere else, essentially, in the main base here for camp. But that is a lot of masks, a lot of masks for Team 1 to build artillery, ASF, game enders, whatever they want to build. There are some Percy's moving in onto Team 2's doorstep, but the bomber does get finished off, kills off the Percy's, and it does look like he'll sort out his power. And was it just that? Yep, literally it was because he was building the bomber. Could have stopped building it, built some pigeons, and then called it a day, but really, really, really wanted to build that uh, T4 bomber. He doesn't even have air control, so I don't know why he would build it. His teammate of It's Not Me has his own ASF, but they are being outnumbered. Not necessarily 2-1, to one, but probably 3-2. to two. Team 1 has, again, their artillery going for a second one. And I don't see any of... Nope, nope. Okay, there's an artillery piece being built here by Camp. So he's getting into that long-range artillery game as well. But, I mean, with all the mass that Team 1 has, they should be funneling it. I mean, they have they have air control. They have a decent amount of map under their control as well. They probably could have funneled a little bit more mass into that artillery game and probably would have knocked out Team 2 shields. But to be fair, It's Not Me has rebuilt one of his artillery pieces and is now rebuilding his second one. So he's had a lot of time to rebuild. Very luckily, usually when both of the artillery for one player go down, they usually don't get the uh, ability to build them again, and especially with losing a third one over here in the east, which still hasn't been reclaimed, by the way. It's still sitting there. And I think I'm going to speed it up just a tiny bit because it's kind of slowed down. It's just artillery firing at one another. It's not really enjoyable to watch. ASF's looking like we're going after those uh, spy planes, but they're going to get a nice readout on Team 1's side of the map. Gunships in the southwest going after T3 Mexes. They're going to, you know, bite at the uh, tails, the ankles, the little ankle biters here from uh, those gunships. Definitely not ankle biters. They're definitely, like, pretty beefy gunships. So they're not stingers or jesters that just really just nip at structures. T3 AA barely in range of that gunship. Gunship will flee just due to the fact they finish their main objective of going after the mexes team two have you going back into the bomb the the boom the giant explosion game nope going for thought about going for it went nah gonna go for this instead the team two's airplay going for artillery which you would think normally the air player would but in this game he did not asf's just get eviscerated by team one's asf look at him look at that huge engagement Trying to draw Team 1's ASFs underneath AA coverage, which, to be fair, for Team 2, we have 29 and we have 51. A lot of them down south, but there's a decent amount. Actually, a lot of them over here, to be fair. A decent amount of them in the middle as well. So Team 2 has done a very good job of trying to lock out air, essentially prevent what happened earlier on from Team 1. The only downside I see is that this eastern side is very devoid of AA, so I could see a move where Team 1 builds up a bunch of strat bombers again, sends them east, 
Maybe he goes after the calm of uh, Salty Pepper, or maybe just tries to hook left and go all the way south, avoids the heavy installation, AA installations, just kind of flies over a couple of AA. Maybe most of them make it to the uh, artillery again, but there are some Nathas that get eviscerated over there. Those Ilshis are still there. I think those are the same Ilshis I made a comment about, just they're there to be there, and they're still there. Chicken firing here in the middle, going after the AA on that front line. We'll be able to destroy this firebase over here. Yo, no, yo, I was that bomber going after this little firebase that's crept up here on Team 2's doorstep. We're closer to the doorstep. ASF's moving in to protect it. The shields are still online, at least for the fat boy's sake. Chicken moving in to assist. That firebase is dead. There's no saving that one. Going to go after the fat boy. Going to actually overshoot that firebase by a little bit. Well, we'll kill off some of those units stationed there. ASF's trying to... Oh, they'll kill off the bomber. The bomber stopped moving, and there it goes. We'll make it almost back to <laughs> Salty Pepper's base. Since they say, hey, I dropped the mass on your doorstep for you. Uh, that's uh, That's got to hurt. But the chicken does get some decent distance on that fat boy. It might catch up to it. It's going to be close. The fat boy might make it underneath shield covers. Looks like based on the range of that. Uh, nope, it's in range. There goes the fat boy. Is it going to be the strap bomb? Is going to be enough? Oh, the, the slow AOE is going to be enough. No, oh, we got it. Oh, <laughs> we got the fat boy. But again, it's on Team 1's doorstep, so really easy to grab. Looks like the chicken faced off against the chicken and a couple of bom a couple of bombers, being a lot of bombers. ASF's come and destroy all of those bombers. Team 1 immediately sending out engineers. And there are some strap bombers being built once again by Sailor Moon. So again, we could see a nice little right then left hook maneuver here from Team 1. The only... Uh, the only downside with that is Team 2 is going to see it. At least they have... Uh, uh, maybe they'll see it. Maybe they'll see it. They do have Omni online, so... They will see some things, but not necessarily everything. Artillery now focused on the air grid for Team 1's air player of camp. Half of it has been destroyed. Half of it is still online. Shields are popping back up. He has his own artillery now, so Team 1 has two and a half artillery pieces online with a nuke. With two... Okay, they have two nukes loaded. Team 2's goal, sorry, Team 1's goal has to be to take out the SMDs. If they take out this one and this one, it opens up. It's not, it's, it's not me's base. And then on Salty Pepper, if they take out this one, who's actually pretty far forward, there should be one a little bit further back. That would be game for Team 1. So that probably is their goal. That's why the artillery from Team 1 is focusing over here around this SMD. This one is the heavier shielded of the two. It's going to take a lot of shots to break through all this air from shielding. Third artillery piece is being built by It's Not Me. That's not going to feel good. And it looks like the shields are actually being assisted. At least the main one over here is being assisted by the engineers from It's Not Me. So even more firepower is going to be needed to crack those shielding. How is uh, Team 1 shielding? The air scout or something flies or spy plane or whatever. I hear strap bombers launching. Where are they? They're over here going after that chicken. And uh, I can hear the whistle from those strap bombers. And they're in my right ear, so I can kind of tell where they're, they're coming from. ASF fight once again. The ASFs from Salty Pepper are the ones going after the strap bombers. I love this. Just a little bit of ASF pressure going after some strap bombers. Won't kill all of them off due to the AA, but we'll get a couple of them. So definitely worth the price of admission for that. You know, let's say a squadron or so of or less of ASS for a couple of bombers. Definitely worth the trade. You know, Team 1 still has air dominance, but being able to take out a couple of those strap bombers means it's going to take longer for Team 1 to build up the necessary firepower to crack the shell of Team 2's position. So, it's kind of one of those things where is it is it worth it to send them now, or do they wait to build up more strap bombers? And in this case, probably build up Team 2 has no air control. They have a lot of... They have, of course, AA. But uh, Team 1 has air control, so it's not really a worry there. Team 2, of course, going for heavy ground experimentals. Actually, a couple of them booping one another. And no bomber being rebuilt. Is going for artillery for Salty Pepper, and obviously for It's Not Me as well. But two more artillery pieces me might pop up here in the next couple of minutes. But 58 minutes on the clock. This is essentially anybody's game. 
If Team 1 loses their artillery, that's probably game for Team 2. If Team 2 loses their SMD slash artillery, that is game for Team 1. So it's one of those essentially hinges on a very few points. And I think at this point I'm going to speed up just a tiny smidgen. And I might just focus on the artillery themselves. Team 2 don't have anything to fight with in the air. They just have the chickens. So essentially is coming down to can Team 2 build enough artillery to crack Team 1's shielding. And it does look like Team 1's Sailor Moon is assisting multiple shields. It looks like this one's being focused. And I think this one's, yeah, this one around the nuke is also being focused. So two groups of engineers shield, uh, assisting the shield regen is huge. What, what do you mean, no? What does no mean? Uh, do they have Maver? You have Maver? No. It's a salty pepper. So... Team 2 is not going for Maver, going for standard artillery. Started, you know, <laughs> and it's actually going to continue construction of it. It's going to take a while, but, you know, he's going to try it. Shields are collapsing around Team 2's his artillery. He's getting more shielding, loses a P-Gen, which means the fire rate on board. That uh, artillery will be slowed down just by a little bit. The one over here, let's check on this as well. This is uh, going to be very crucial. This is the main focus of Team 1. This is the main focus of Team 2. Third artillery coming online. I'm going to check the air in the uh, map in the middle. But I don't lose track of those bombers who went somewhere. But shielding around the third artillery has fallen. Strap. Oh, I hear strap bombers. I'll use... Uh, oh, but the shielding is falling around this one as well. I think I'll switch this one very quick. Where are the ASFs? Looks like they're going after the chickens here. Those defenses should be fine. They could crack a little bit, but they should be fine. Oh, the shields are starting to pop back on and off. Oh, it's getting dicey here for Team 2. Team 1, your shields are holding strong. Two artillery pieces, of course, underneath that shield coverage. That one solitary shield keeping Team 2 alive in this game. Oh, is it going to be enough? Oh, there goes the Pigeon, but the shield pops back online. This one is severely weakened if it explodes. I think the artillery pieces are fine, but, uh, you know, that's the whole assuming and all that likeness. And the ASFs, uh, let's see, it's blitz over really quickly. All the chickens die, as I thought. So the ground attack does not work. A lot of Team 1 Azui spam outbound from It's Not Me. That's uh, not really working here for Team 2, but it's at least a distraction at a, at a minimum. Artillery still online for It's Not Me. One hour, one minute on the clock. It's an artillery war in this game, and it has been for a while, but still, it's, I mean... It's essentially what shield will break first. Team 2 assisting only one shield. Team 1 assisting two shields. Will that mean the difference? Will focusing on one make the difference? Or will focusing on two make the difference? We just have to continue to watch to see. Again, there are three artillery pieces land or shots landing from Team 1. One outbound from camp. Two outbound from this position. And it's the one over here. And again, Team 2 only has the two. The third one was stopped construction because the focus is on the two surviving underneath It's Not Me shield. And It's Not Me shield is staying online. He is next to some P-Gen, so I have to be careful of the AOE splash. Damage on board that, uh, on board that uh, mechanic. But he does have Nano. He doesn't have uh, Advanced Nano, so it doesn't have as much of the regen. But, you know, almost 100 hit points is pretty good, especially with the Team 3 Engineering Suite. Get some additional hit points from that. Shields are starting to collapse around Team 1, but the main shields are staying online, which is the most important thing. Team 2 isn't building as many shields, so not having as much as a, of a survivability chance. But, you know, it, focusing on one could make the difference. How is the artillery coming along here for Salty Pepper? Salty Pepper has T3 artillery online. And it's now three artillery versus... Th oh, oh, wrong screen. That, that, there we go. I'll move that back over. Oh, it almost got uh, taken out, but the shield is staying strong. Oh, it's it's staying, but it's it's not great. How, <laughs> building more pigeons back there. He needs more power. He, it's not me. He needs more power. On the land side of things, I don't see much of anything on the map. Just a lot of ASF swarming around here for Team uh, 1. Looks like the AA is actually progressing northward. So that's more of a buffer zone being created here by Team 2. The main shield is down. One of the artillery, both the artilleries are still online. The main, or oh, that was close. But, it oh, no, oh, that's going to be it. That might be it here. The main shielding is down, and the P-Gens have exploded. And the artillery has been destroyed. And Team 2's It's Not Me, Control K's. He knows it's over. 
Team 2 has one more artillery piece online. It is over here, and there goes Team 2's other comm of Salty Pepper. He also control Ks. That means it is a victory here for Team 1 at 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 46 seconds. Hmm, who to pick for MVP? Uh, uh, I, oh, I don't know. Honestly, I think I got to give it. I think I got to give it to Sailor Moon. I mean, again, the artillery was the main factor towards the later stage of the game. His strap bombers, I think it was his strap bombers, came in and took out the artillery the first time. I think it was his, if not camps. The artillery. The, the bombers that came in from Team 1 took out the artillery the first time. That delayed Team 2 from getting the artillery back online long enough for Team 1 to get their own, at least another one. And had they not gone down, Team 2 would have gotten a third one and maybe even a fourth one, and that would have been game for Team 1. Team 2 would have won that game. So that play right there definitely set the stage for Team 1 to win in the artillery wars, and then it was just a matter of can Team one break the shielding of team two or vice versa and team two is broke and team two lost but let me know down in the comments who you think it would be mvp i i don't know i think i want to go with sailor moon but camp also did a really good job with air so it's kind of hard to pick which one let me know down in the comments who you would pick for mvp and again thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already thank you so much for watching to the end and end, 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 end of the video and i will see all of you in the next one